I would like to welcome to the Wednesday Night Metal Mania show from Gargamel, the Man Daddy. Welcome, brother. Hi, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, sure. can you hear me? Hear you, man. It, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, man, thank you very much for inviting me. Absolutely. Yeah, right. How are things going back just... I'm uh, just kicking back right now. Cracked open a fresh 32 ounce of Mickey's Ice. Nice. Ice out age. Well, um, we are malt, malt liquor night. Nice. We are on the uh, the uh, what you call it the reverse osmosis machine or whatever the fuck they call it. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, dude, we've uh, we've been playing you guys for a while. Uh, me and Tony Bullets are like, you know, we're pretty big fans of you guys. Every time I get a chance to play on the show, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, that's what's up. So, oh, fucking thanks. Hell yeah, oh, yeah man. Dude, I'm you. Yeah, man. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, first question I want to get into, which I knew all of your listeners out there, the fans of you guys, myself, 2009, first date music came out. It was an amazing EP. What's in the works right now? Anything? Yeah, right now we're actually working on a bunch of new songs uh, with our newest drummer. who's He's been in the band two years, but that's, that's new. <laughs> um, and so we've got about uh, about five songs right now. We want to get we we kind of want to get more of a full album thing instead of doing another EP, uh, but so we're trying to work on new material. We've already got uh, new songs are called Burning Daylight People is one we're playing a lot. Um, what's another one? Uh, uh, Minister of Chaos we've been playing a lot. Uh, we have a new one called Nymph Fest '95, and so we've got some of those. Plus we've we've got a few that are still in the works that aren't ready to be played live. But we were thinking about doing maybe a Kickstarter or a GoFund. I know it's kind of cheesy, but it's just freaking the only way to go nowadays. And maybe yeah, do that sure. somewhere down the line to get a, to get a, a good decent album done and, and doing it in the studio instead of doing it ourselves. That is very sick. Maybe we we need uh, one of those things. We need we need to, one of those uh, charitable pay us money to fix our shit kind of deals, man. I'm hearing different voices and different angles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 how did you get for uh, Gargamel actually uh, formed uh, about 22 years ago as uh, uh, side projects of a few different bands, and uh, those bands eventually went away, and Gargamel still continues and breathes today. Nice. That was very cool. Um, I got something that's way off the subject, dude. So I'm a big fan of your YouTube okay. videos, and one thing that I've noticed <laughs> about you is that you are a tube and throat singer, and you're actually really yeah. good at it, man. What got you into that? Um, just, I always did a lot of weird stuff in my throat and always trying to find new and, you know, interesting things to do. And I started hearing about the, uh, about ter- tube and throat singing and just started getting into it and messing around my throat and trying to find different tones. And it was just recently where I really started to find that third, that whistle tone, which is really weird to do because it, it, it basically involves where you're positioning your tongue. And so you're making your head a freaking whistle. And so uh, it's fun to do late at night when you're drinking a bunch of Mickey's ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I've got to hear this. So can you do something now? That'd be awesome. Uh, let me give it a try. I don't know if I get the whistle, but I can at least chant. Hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> Tribute of that tube and throat singing. Here we go. 
Welcome to Andy Sixon's Wednesday Night Metal Mania. The Andy Sixon Journal. Now find your heads and get metal with it. Metal. What the fuck? Something's going on. We got ghosts, man. We got ghosts. We got ghosts and ghosts. We got ghosts and ghosts. We got ghosts and ghosts. Shit, this guy really like right of under the dome or something. What's going on here? Fucking weird, yeah, man. man. Stephen King's in the house. Man, <laughs> I got a question for you. Uh, me and Brian okay. uh, were really were really hurt by the loss of uh, Dave Brocky, and I know I know that you played with Gore. Yeah. Did, did you get oh, to yeah. meet Dave? Oh yeah, we actually we played with Gore a few times. We also uh, played with his uh, side project, the Dave Brocky Experience. Uh, we yeah, did uh, yeah. a bunch of. Floor- we did like three or four Florida dates with them and got to hang out with them a lot. He was really insanely cool person. Like, uh, just, I, I can't express how nice he was. Like, I mean, after we had played with Gore the first time, he was uh, playing at Will's with the Dave Rocky experience. And I was showing up early to load out some gear. And he's like, he called my name out first. He recognized me before I recognized him. And I was like, dude, you're fucking older, you're younger. You don't know who I am. Get the hell out of here. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> but one of the, uh, one of my favorite experiences that ever ever happened to me backstage is uh, we uh, the night the first night we played with Guar, uh, I was hanging out backstage smoking bowls with Slymenster Hyman, which in itself is fucking what? cool. And uh, Dave, yeah, and Odor Urungarus walked through our dressing room in full gear, singing one of my parodies from our stupid medley song we do at the end of our set. He, he walked through the dressing room going, I take a going, I take a bong swat, I take a key bump, I take a micro dot, and then I drink a lot. And he's saying that while walking through in full uh, guar gear while I'm smoking a bowl with Slime Mestrom. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. This is all I need. I'm good. <laughs> my, my career has peaked at this point. That's, dude. Yeah. That's so cool, <laughs> man. Quit. Done. Yeah. No, it's not going to be any better. But it's not. this. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, it was, uh, right, it was man, really cool. He... he was a great person. Yes. That's that's really a great story. I was really um, looking forward to that question, and, and that's really awesome. <laughs> All right, I oh, want to jump you. into the first song. This is one of my favorites by you guys. We've got a situation okay. here. Could you yeah. tell me the, the the vision behind this song? Um, yeah, what it, it, it's about um, an estranged son from like a wealthy family who has just kind of disappeared and gone off the map, and so they hire uh, someone to uh, find him. And when the the guy finally finds him, he like kidnaps him for the family. The family wants him like restrained, and so he gets him, kidnaps him and finds out that the guy had actually been for the last several years a very successful serial killer. And so he turns the, uh, turns the tables on the guy that's looking for him, and he captures oh. him to, to murder him. And that's why it's why don't we stay, because he's like, once taken, he's like, no, we're going to stay here now. Damn. Wow. Yeah, it's just an amazing song. Wait till you hear this, Brian. Uh-oh. Man, oh, Eddie, you would much. you give us the honor of introducing this song for us and the listeners? This song? Sure, no problem. Yep. Hi. I'm Man Daddy from Gargamel. You're about to hear some of my music and the music of my band. Mostly me, a little bit of them. You know how it goes. So Gargamel, and this song is called We Got a Situation Here. And I can say that I'm you. 
situation here. and join us on the show is the man daddy from gargamel amazing song uh, that was really awesome dude <laughs> thank you very much like I've, I've actually heard that one before tony and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's one of my favorites too man i just love that yeah, fucking dude. keyboard <laughs> like, it makes your song like <laughs> like almost kind of like i don't know like cartoonish but like fucked up like i don't know how yeah, <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of cartoon in what we do, especially with what, with what Servo brings to the mix. Hell yeah! Is that where, is that ultimately what brought the name uh, that you came from the Smurfs? Is that really where you got that from? Um, no, actually, the way we got the name is that uh, there used to be a band in town called Azriel that uh, Bobby Colby, oh, who uh, uh, ended up, he used to be in uh, from Death, and now with Junkie Rush and with a bunch of other projects. But um, originally. We just wanted to have a show as a joke, Gargamel and Azrael together again, and the wow. show never actually happened. The show never happened, and we're still here. We've never we've never used any uh, like Smurf imagery or anything, and the me wearing the robes on stage was never meant to look like Gargamel. We just used to always yeah. wear masks and different costumes, and it got pared down over the years just because we, we used to always wear masks on stage. We used to never take them off, but then Slipknot and Mushroom Head came out. We're like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 we still wear the mask. We wear the mask occasionally, but usually it's just to start off the show, just for uh, just because it kind of looks fun. Yeah, because that shit's got to be yeah. hot as fuck, man. <laughs> you, you, that, you know, know. <laughs> one thing I've noticed on your your YouTube videos is I don't know if you're completely human the way your eyes bulge like that, and I know that's not camera or computer <laughs> graphics. No, that's. Uh, no, that's a, that just happens to be an effect on my phone. I, I, my, my, I, my eyes do bug out normally. My, my eyes bug out pretty far when I'm on stage, but I get a little digital augmentation when on YouTube. That is really true. Cool. I like that effect, man. Um, oh, yeah. let me no, ask I just found it on my phone. I was like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. Yes. Yeah, I like that, dude. That's a really, really cool thing you do. Uh, when you were growing up, uh, your style, let me just kind of go into this first. Your sound is classified, at least through Wikipedia, as metal funk, um, which is really mm-hmm. cool. It, it, your sound is so unique. Nobody sounds like Gargamel. Um, no. No. Oh, uh, 
let me ask you, when you were growing up, who were your influences? Um, well, uh, for Gargamel in general, uh, Mr. Bungle is, of course, a huge, obvious influence. Oh, uh, you know, that's an obvious influence. All of us uh, have our own thing going on. Uh, metal is a, a big part of all of our coming up. So with me, you know, back in the day, Iron Maiden, Anthrax, Slayer, you know, the original wave of uh, speed metal and thrash metal. Uh, I'm, uh, and also stuff like Oingo Boingo is something I'm really into. Uh, and so just basically taking all of our influences and just saying that, well, Hey, if, if you like a style, why don't you just try to throw it in there? You know, instead of being like, I yeah, just be a straight up metal band or just having to straight, straight be a reggae band. Why not be a metal band that can sometimes play reggae, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. Like Dred Zeppelin. Dred Zeppelin didn't give a fuck either. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. They, 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 they got their own thing going on. That's very is it sick. That is it wrong that uh, during I, that song I was playing Grand Theft Auto Five online? Is it wrong? Nice. <laughs> I'm just saying. It, it, it seemed like a really good. Over it. Yeah, exactly. It seemed like a really good uh, like soundtrack to uh, make some fake money online. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> there you go. Have you ever uh, played the uh, uh, the Scarface game from the original Xbox? I uh, played it for about five minutes at a friend's house before a show, and it was fucked up, man. <laughs> Yeah, you, you actually sell grams of cocaine, and you get extra money if you insult people yeah. as they die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, yep, that's Garfield yep. music right there. Oh, yeah. It's like uh, the, uh, the original Daddy. Max Payne. Shit, Max Payne, the original was a trip. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, dude, I, go, I actually go back to Apocalypse uh, featuring Bruce Willis on PlayStation, the original. That was a fucking oh, bad shit. There you go. Ever, yeah. Man. Wow. That's man, Daddy, do y'all have any do y'all have any pre-show rituals that you guys do before you go on, like a lot of bands do? <laughs> uh, drinking. <laughs> drinking. That's, uh, that's uh, drink, drinking and swats. Those are uh, that's uh, for most of us. Not uh, our, our, not our drummer, but for uh, for me and uh, most of us, there's a, there's usually a good amount of drinking and swats going on, but. Uh, we uh we just like to get together and have a good time. Basically, we've been doing this a long enough time that uh it's uh we uh, we always shake our hands with two fingers at the end of the set. That's the that's the old, that's a post show ritual. But before we go on stage, it's basically like it's like fuck you, fuck you, let's play. All right, here we go. Nice. When I see you guys got a show uh, coming up on the uh, 16th. I'm sure you've played yep, Monster before. It's a really really awesome venue. Um, so I just yep. want to wish you guys the best of that show. Um, I'm going to try my damn to be much. there. I'd like to see that. Yeah, definitely, dude. Yeah. Um, what, yeah, I, I Saturday think night at you, Bombshells. Which is, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Saturday night Bombshells. What time are you guys going on? Uh, we're probably going last to three, so I'm guessing like between 11.30 midnight, somewhere around then, and that way we'll be able to play a good long hour-plus set. That is so sick. Who, uh, yeah, I can't who, wait. Who else, is, who else is playing that show? Uh, it's a, a band called Tears of a Tyrant, and uh, our friends in the After are going on after them. And at Bombshells, it's no. at Bombshells is a really cool club. It actually it's within walking distance of my house, which is fucking awesome when you're playing a show. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, and uh, and I actually do trivia there on Thursdays. So I'll be there tomorrow night, fucking doing trivia. Um, but there's going to be a, a, a band, a cover band playing in the front room. So in the front room, they're going to have like a, a cover band that plays classic rock and modern rock stuff. And then they have in the back room with us. You'll have the other uh, the other band. So it's a it's a whole entertainment complex down the bombshells. Yeah, uh, man, Daddy, I have a question for you. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll ask I ask this question to bands. Sometimes sometimes it kind of stumps them. Uh, they're not ready for the question, but um, you may have a, a ready to go answer. Out of your yeah. career, do you have one of the like? A one most memorable moment on stage or anything that, that really you remember more than anything so far? God, um, there, there's so many different flashes and, you know, and, and weird things that have happened over the years. It's like, it, it'd be hard to pick out one, you know, when yeah. you, when you played enough fucking shows, it's like, there's so many, it's, you know, it's just being on stage is its, its own little world. Um, I, I have a funny story that it's not the best time I ever had on stage, but it explained what it's like to be in the world of being on stage. Um, my wife one time was sometimes saying that, oh, I was right there in the front. How come you didn't see me? And I tried to explain to her that, look, when I'm on stage, I don't see what's going on. And then right. a few months later, we were playing a show and the band, the Killer Robots showed up in their full Killer Robot gear and came in and, the st and were dancing around uh, in front of the stage. I didn't see them. 
<laughs> my wife was like, oh, did you see when the killer robots came in? I'm like, nope. And she's like, wow, you don't see anything that's going on in front of you. I'm like, nope. And so when, when we get on stage, it's just basically, it's, it's, uh, at least for me, it's like pretty much my happiest time where I'm not thinking about any other bullshit that's bringing me down that week and uh, completely just be in mode. So my favorite moment on stage, I guess, would be every moment on stage. Wow. Okay. Oh, man, Daddy, I want to thank you a little so deep, very I know, much I'm sorry. for doing this. <clears throat> no, it's, oh, thank it's you very much for honor. inviting me. Yeah, definitely. Oh, thank it's you. been a, a, much of an honor to have you on the show. Uh, whenever I got your text tonight on Facebook and I found out that you were going to be on the show, dude, my fucking stomach dropped, dude. I was like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, just, it's it's been great. Um, this is one more thing. Uh, before I let you go, uh, I'm going to play Cold and Twitchy now. Would you mind uh-huh. introducing the song for the listeners once again? Oh, let, let, me, let me tell you about this song. This is actually a part two of a two-part song. Uh, this is uh, the first the first song of this story is called Get On Your Motorbike, which is on um, uh, Touch My Fun. And that song yeah. is about a uh, emergency medical technician who's really good at his job unless he's attracted to the person he's going to go help. And then he lets them die so he can eventually cut off the body parts that he really likes. And then he eventually assembles like a <laughs> Frankenstein creature of all the hot parts he wants, brings it back to life. And then things don't go so well. And so this is part two, Cold and Twitchy, where he's living in a relationship with this put together. And it actually, it, it's like a human hybrid with a engine on the, uh, like a 440 big block or something on the back of it. And so what? he's living in a relationship with this thing and, and things don't go so well. And so it's, it's about having sex with a do- dead body is cold and twitchy. Nice. Damn. That's fucking <laughs> insane. I love you guys. <laughs> no shit. Thank you so very much. Yeah, dude. All right. Uh, yeah, feel well, free to call in any time. If I make it, if I get more more, more plug in, just because I'd be remiss in my duty as yeah. a fucking lead singer if I didn't. Uh, we're we're playing this Saturday uh, at Bombshells, and then uh, two weeks from then we're playing the thirtieth at the Haven. Uh, we're playing at the Haven with Phil for their CD release party. I mean, uh, their their reunion party. Uh, and so oh, no we're be playing the thirtieth at Haven. So. There's a two chance to see Gargamel. Please come out to see us this Saturday at Bombshells. And, and just because I think Bombshells is a venue that needs a lot more attention and people need to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep it yeah, not, so, oh, I'm not sure. I'm there. So Bombshells seems to be the place and, to be going. I, I cracked this, uh, I cracked this uh, quart of beer at the beginning of the interview, and I'm just finishing this quart of beer at the end of the interview. Nah, yeah, I'm right there with you. Right there with you, brother. Cheers, man. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Uh, Here we go. Uh, Man, Daddy, once right, again, I, uh, thank you thank so you. very much for doing this. Um, I, please keep us informed. Please call in anytime oh, you well. can. We're going to be pumping Gargamel for the rest of the days of this show, my friend. Oh, well, thank you all very much. I uh, hope you all had a great time. Um, I'll be listening to podcasts because my internet right now is fucked. Uh, so I'll be listening to podcasts, and I'll give you guys a call sometime soon, man. Definitely. Thank you all very, very much for the invite oh, for the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Far, okay. Bro. Well, man, Eddie, we got the song ready to go. Take it away for the listeners. All right, all you fuckers out there, you're about to listen to some Gargamel. This is a song about sticking it in something, and that something happens to be cold and twitchy, this one. Maybe you better with no The one with 
Stop.